The sheer level of surveillance being planned is straight out of the dystopia created by author George Orwell in his book 1984, where the eyes of the state, Big Brother, are always watching you. But now it is being made easy with the 21th century spy technology. Before we start, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell to receive our latest notifications. Mass surveillance in China emerged in the Maoist era after the establishment of the People's Republic of China in 1949. Mao invented this mechanism of control that encompassed the entire nation and its people in order to strengthen his power in the newly founded government. In the early years, when technology was relatively undeveloped in China, mass surveillance was relied through disseminating information by word of mouth. Chinese people kept a watchful eye on one another and reported inappropriate behaviors that infringed upon the dominant social ideals of the time. And as technology advanced, now every move is seemingly captured digitally. Cameras perch over sidewalks, hover across busy intersections, and swivel above shopping districts. Eight of the top 10 most surveilled cities in the world are in China, according to Comparitech, as the world's number two economy rolls out an unparalleled system of social control. Facial recognition software is used to access office buildings, snare criminals, and even shame jaywalkers at busy intersections. China has recently embarked on a number of ambitious infrastructure projects abroad. Megacity construction, high-speed rail networks, not to mention the country's much-vaunted built and road initiative. But these won't reshape history like China's digital infrastructure, which could shift the balance of power between the individual and the state worldwide. As of 2018, the Chinese central government had also adopted facial recognition technology, surveillance drones, robot police, and big data collection targeting online social media platforms to monitor its citizens. One scheme being developed is the so-called Sharp Eyes program, which aims to cover 100% of all public spaces in cameras. It is named after a quote from China's former dictator Mao Zedong, that the people have sharp eyes when looking out for neighbors, not living up to communist values. Sharp Eyes has already seen more than 200 million public and private security cameras installed across China, reports tech and science journal One Eye. Mass surveillance in China is closely related to its social credit system and has notably expanded under the China Internet Security Law and with the help of local companies like Tencent, Dawa Technology, Hegvision, SenseTime, ByteDance, Megvi, Huawei, and ZTE, among many others. As of 2019, it is estimated that 200 million monitoring CCTV cameras of the Skynet system have been put to use in mainland China, four times the number of surveillance cameras in the United States. Nowadays, the number of surveillance cameras in China has grown very rapidly and is estimated at 626 million. The coronavirus pandemic has accelerated the implementation of mass surveillance as it has provided a plausible pretext to do so. China's facial recognition cameras and surveillance system can be used to conduct seemingly innocuous tasks, such as monitoring visitors at tourist sites and conducting security checks at airports, but also for more invasive purposes, like predictive policing and helping carry out repressive policies. Authorities in the western province of Xinjiang, for example, have deployed widespread surveillance systems to collect facial recognition, smartphone and other tracking data to monitor and detain members of the region's minority Igor population. In the name of fighting terrorism, members of the predominantly Muslim ethnic groups, mostly Igors but also Kazakhs, Uzbeks and Kyrgyz, are forced to surrender biometric data like photos, fingerprints, DNA, blood and voice samples. Police are armed with smartphone app that then automatically flags certain behaviors, according to reverse engineering by the advocacy group Human Rights Watch. Those who grow a beard, leave their house via a back door or visit the mosque, often are red flagged by the system and interrogated. In 2005, the Chinese government created a mass surveillance system called Skynet. The government revealed Skynet's existence in 2013, by which time the network included over 20 million cameras. In addition to monitoring the general public, cameras were installed outside mosques in the Qingjiang region, temples in Tibet, and the homes of dissidents. In Qiqiao, 
a city of roughly 300,000 in southern China, for example, officials have installed more than 1,400 video cameras and over 300 facial recognition cameras since 2006. China file found. The report said officials have blanketed most of the city's public spaces with the cameras to address the difficult problem of how to control people according to a government document obtained by China File. Ultimately, even protesters' forensic safeguards may not be enough as technology advances. In his Beijing headquarters, Huang Yongzhen, CEO of IA firm Watrix, shows off his latest gate recognition software, which can identify people from 50 meters away by analyzing thousands of metrics about their walk, even with faces covered or backs to the camera. It's already been rolled out by security services across China, he says. Though he's ambivalent about privacy concerns, from our perspective we just provide the technology, he says. As for how it's used, like all high-tech, it may be double-edged sword. In a demonstration, Ling Jia Hong, a Xin Bao salesman, searched one common name, a Chinese equivalent of John Smith, and came up with three guests, their hotels, room numbers, time of check-in, registered address, ethnicity, and age. Through data on our platform, we can dig out all records of a particular person and make a comprehensive analysis of the route of activities of this person, said Mr. Lin, who added that his company also offered algorithms to flag women who check into multiple hotels in one night for suspicions of prostitution. It goes much beyond that. In Shenzhen, for example, in the south, or in Xinjiang, in the northeast, you have these billboard systems and cameras and artificial intelligence cameras when you jaywalk. Still already while you are still in the middle of the road, your face appears on the huge billboard for everybody to see. And next to your face, your name appears, your ID number, parts of it is censored. But the whole point is, we know who you are. This is you, and you are actually hurting society this moment right now. So public shaming is a big part of it. The China Social Credit System, also known as China's Ranking System, uses so-called big data to monitor and assess trustworthiness. The goal is to construct a high-trust society which rewards individuals and companies for following the law. As well as regional variations, there are distinct social credit systems for citizens, businesses, and government officials. If you are wondering what might be the reasons or motives behind such initiative, the goal is for social credit scores to make it easier for people and businesses to make fully informed business decisions. A high social credit score will be an indicator that the other party can be trusted in a business context. The system will manage the rewards or punishments of citizens on the basis of their economic and personal behavior. Some types of punishments for poor social credit include flight ban, exclusion from private schools, slow internet connection, exclusion from high prestige work, exclusion from hotels, and registration on a public blacklist. While some rewards for good social credit include discounts on energy bills, being able to rent bikes and hotels without payments of a deposit, and better interest rates at banks. Authorities link personal details on the mandatory ID card which people must carry with a huge database of information linked to that person. The data includes CCTV footage of them, medical history, supermarket memberships, IP addresses, phone calls, social media usernames, delivery records, residential addresses, and hotel states, records of friends, or love interests. Petitioning to the government and other subserve activity is also monitored. Basically, the state can record everything people have been up to, and draw you to their attention if suspicious activity is predicted. China's epic surveillance state has flourished even more during the COVID-19 pandemic. While authorities have primarily used mobile location data, and ID link tracing apps to flag people coming back from abroad for quarantine. The camera surveillance system has played an important role, according to officials, state media, and residents. The network has been used to locate and trace the contacts of people confirmed as infected with the virus, and to punish businesses and individuals flooring restrictions. But the digital dictatorship was also used to stifle criticism and track down and target people who speak out. Many in the West had hoped that technology would prove a liberating force in China. Former US President Bill Clinton once compared the Communist Party's efforts to control the internet to nailing Jello to the wall. But by now, we can see how wrong was Bill Clinton. This sums it up 
and brings us to the end of today's episode. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and hit that bell to receive our latest notifications. See you in the next one, take care.